I'm Helen Molesworth. I'm a gemologist, gem specialist and jewellery historian. And I'm delighted to be here today as part of our series of Encountering Beauty for Masterpiece. And today I would like to talk to you about emerald. Emerald is the green variety of the mineral beryl, coloured by chromium and vanadium, and one of the oldest and most revered and valued gem materials on the planet. Emerald is particularly special as it has been so long loved around for millennia and appreciated far and wide around the world from the ancient Egyptians, Native Americans, Europeans, Middle Easterns and Mughal Indians. And because of this amazing history, there are some extraordinary examples of ancient emeralds with some super stories. This one in particular is very special, the Cheapside Hoard Emerald Watch. In 1912, Workmen were flattening a building in London's East End Cheapside district, not so far from St Paul's Cathedral. The building belonged to the Goldsmiths Company and had many working jewellers as tenants, but was built in 1667 to replace buildings destroyed by the Fire of London the year before, and was by then dilapidated enough for demolition. As the builders were bashing through the floorboards, they unearthed one of the coolest discoveries of all time and the greatest single collection of 16th and 17th century jewellery in the world and it would come to be known as the Cheapside Hoard. Not just a pretty pile of very early antique jewels, the hoard also opened our eyes to the extent of globalisation of the Elizabethan and Jacobean gem trade. Amongst hundreds of incredible jewels and gems, sapphires, diamonds, spinel, amethysts, opals and agates, and some even antique in their own time. Perhaps the most amazing was an emerald, a significant single crystal carved as the case of a watch. It was an enormous emerald, especially by the standards of the day, large enough to have a watch movement placed inside the centre of the stone, and it had a hinged lid, probably from the same crystal, that was so fine and transparent that the time could be read with the lid up or down. Now most emeralds have noticeable inclusions, that's to say flaws in the stone, and they're kindly called jardin from the French from gardens, as a sort of delicate way of saying the emerald isn't perfect. And you can see some of the inclusions here, but they have really are so few that this would have been an extremely important stone of high clarity. The other most obvious feature is something particularly super for gem geeks, and that's the hexagonal form, the natural shape of the emerald crystal. Many early emerald objects, even emerald cups and tablets, had been fashioned to follow the hexagonal shape of the natural crystal, but never before a watch. That was unheard of. The crystal would have grown as a six-sided prism, the edges and face and base of the watch just polished to smooth the natural shape, so it's quite remarkable, and the movement itself had been signed by a Swiss watchmaker, Gautier Furlit of Geneva, and it had such advanced time and even alarm functions that it must have been at the height of technology and cost of its day. Thanks to the signature, and it's the only signed jewel in the whole hoard, this unique object could be dated to around 1600, making the emerald crystal one of the earliest emeralds exported from the New World into Europe. Because, due to the size and quality, this emerald had undoubtedly to have come from one origin and one origin only, Colombia. Known to the locals for centuries before, Colombian emeralds from mines such as Muzo and Shivor were unlike any others from other known origins, producing large and fine clear crystals compared with the Austrian and Egyptian gems of old, and Colombia still holds its reputation as number one emerald producer in the world today. Now these Colombian emeralds were first discovered by the Spanish conquistadors only in the middle of the 16th century, and so the first emeralds to leave South America for Europe would have not been long before our watch, and indeed this could have been one of the earliest to have been taken to Europe. So this very special early emerald came out of Colombia, was brought to Europe by the Spanish, was made into a watch in Geneva, and was discovered buried under antique floorboards in London. That is one extraordinary emerald.